Hello everyone, this is Anton Benning uh, coming to you once again from Steenwijk, the Netherlands. And this is to continue upon Emmy's question about when and how to hire your first employee. So yesterday we covered uh, when to hire your first employee and that basically comes down to when you have tasks that you can outsource for less money than you'd uh, calculate for your own hourly rate, those are the tasks that you outsource to somebody else. First can in the beginning be part-time, be freelancing, already fixed employees, but as soon as possible start protecting your time, your hourly rate by outsourcing any task that is worth less. Okay. So let's continue on how to hire right. These are best practices from some of the most successful people in the world that I've studied through the, the Entrepreneur Roller Coaster book. And first of all, we as entrepreneurs, we are hopeless romantics. We see the, the good in anyone and the, the, we want to see opportunities and the best in all people. This makes us horrible hiring managers. So tip one, get help and never interview less than three people for a specific function. There are certain steps and the step one is, do they have the qualities that you need them to have for the, the role the, uh, that you want them to have in your organization? This is uh, number one, because we have to hire evidence and not hope. And that is just get help from somebody who is, uh, yeah, pragmatic and rational. And as probably most entrepreneurs don't really have that uh, particular skill set uh, inherent in them. Two, A players only. And the reason for this, okay, there are three types of uh, employees. And in this book, The Entrepreneur Roller Coaster, they are classified as A players, B players, and C players. And the A player in this instance is the unicorn, the, the, the employee that can set your dreams on fire and help you reach your, your, your wildest ambitions. They are often wrongly seen as very expensive people because they are the opposite of that. They are free. Would you be willing to pay somebody a hundred thousand dollars? Yes, of course, if he brings in another two million to your bottom line. Would you pay someone five million dollars? Yes, of course, if he'd bring in a hundred million million to your bottom line. So it is not about the cost of it. If you hire the right person, the right person will be free, will just be making you money. So that is the A player, but you also have the B, the average people and the C employees in the market. And disappointingly enough, there are a lot of more, a lot more B players and C players in the market than there are A player employees to be found. And Steve Jobs, calls uh, when the moment you start hiring a B player calls it the bozo effect and this means that the moment you hire a B player the B player will never hire A players because then he'll be afraid of his job the B player will only hire C players so if you start out your company with a B player uh, or a C player uh, you might as well quit right now your business will only be as good as the people you recruit to join it. That is what Darren Hardy says about it. Okay, so what does a, a, an A player look like? First of all, they're better than you. Make it your goal to, as a CEO, be the dumbest person in the room. No, not the smartest, the dumbest. Because when everybody around your table is smarter than you in their specific subject, then you can leave everything to them and just be the visionary. Just know where the business goes. If you have a, a, a CFO and you have a better solution on a financial matter than your CFO, you have the wrong CFO. So make it your rule to be the dumbest person in the room. 
So always hire people who are better than you are at the topic that you are hiring them for. Okay, that's one. Two, they have the character that suits your business culture, your company culture. And I have a story. This is from an interview between the CEO of Hilton and Darren Hardy. And when he stayed at the Hilton, he was so astonished about the awesome treatment that he had, how friendly everybody was to him, all the staff, so friendly natured. And the next day when he had the interview, he asked the CEO, how do you train your people to be so friendly? And... It made him ponder. Uh, he was thinking because he looked puzzled in not in a way not knowing how to respond, how to answer this question. And then he came to the answer and he said, "We don't train our people to be friendly. We hire friendly people. So after you have passed the qualities that you want, which will be stated in the resume, hire character." And if you want some character traits, as an example, this is what Warren Buffett uh, looks for. He looks for integrity, intelligence and energy. And he warns if the first one is not there, the second two will work in your disadvantage. So that is just a, 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 an example of it. And the third thing is they are in love. They have the possibility to fall in love with your goal, your mission, your vision, your company. That is what Steve Jobs looked for when he was looking at the, uh, uh, at his board. Not just the skill. A skill is an ante. They must have that. But the second question he asked himself, will or can this person fall in love with Apple? And that is why Apple is so successful. The people who work for Apple love Apple. Okay. What do these A, play, A players want? They, and I'll continue to, with that in the next video because this one is uh, becoming a bit of a long stretch now. Uh, I want to have you to have an awesome day. Don't forget to live with passion and tomorrow I'll be back uh, and I'll explain you what does this A player uh, want? How can you attract this person into your business? Okay, enjoy the day, live with passion.